Good morning. Time for another garden walk. Oh. Gotta put some dirt in some of these holes out here in the yard. Which are getting kind of hazardous to our foot health. We uh, haven't been out here in a couple days because we had stuff going on in the house, but we've got lots of peppers. We got a couple jalapeno pepper plants that are uh, heavy and uh, starting to lean a little bit. They're getting that lean going. Look at them. Ooh, that one was <laughs> leaned over so much. These mammoth jalapenos, man, I'm telling you. We got some red shishitos. Look at those pretty peppers back there. So pretty. Ooh. Sad little plants got tomatoes on it though. And it's been eaten. What is this? Look at that. Look at that. Poor little pepper, poor little tomato. It's been eat up. Look how tiny these little cherries are. They're turning red. They are. They're super, super small. Let's look at that. The jungle out here though that's one of the ones that wasn't doing very good to begin with too this one yeah. this one's still it's, it's not super big but I think the I think the heat of the summer is just kind of worn real thin on these a little disappointing we did not we did not prune the suckers this year. We decided we were going to try and let yeah, just let them go and see what what happened. What do you think? They're a little crazy. It's crazy to me that uh, the bigger ones that we've just kind of, that have just kind of gone wild have less fruit on them compared to some of these little sad ones. Well, I think part of that is these plants have been putting so much energy into growing mm -hmm. and producing more more leaders and more leaves and stuff. So they don't have nearly as many tomatoes on them. And, and ones like this one, it's, it's just kind of went, the only energy I can spend is on, on tomatoes. So that's what we'll do. But we're gonna let them gonna let them do the thing we might uh take a sucker or two and try to transplant yeah or try to uh, root we also have some of the uh job's uh plant spikes plant spikes for tomatoes coming in so we're gonna try them on them too who was it we saw that did that was that rachel it was rachel from 1870s homestead yeah. so we're gonna try those we're in Georgia, so can't hurt. <laughs> yeah, we're in Georgia, so you know the the growing season is kind of extended. And our zucchini, we got a couple of good zucchini off. The, oh my goodness, look at that big boy! Oh yeah, but I'm sure that I can see it has pickle worms. It's got pickle worms. We've got some powdery mildew issues. <clears throat> yeah, we got some pretty bad powdery powdery mildew issues. I don't know if, if, if some of this is from just late planting. Oh, there's... Oh, yeah, there's a hole right there. That seems like squash. Mmm, we got like three on this one. We got more coming up on this one. Really got to do some work out here. Yeah. Yeah, because these are finally starting to produce. It took forever. Those over there look horrible. That one's got vine borers. Hi, Casper. Hi, Bundy. It's got zucchini, I mean, uh, squash on it, too. Yeah. Those behind you look horrible. Yeah, they do. And I feel like the, the back part of the garden is, is just not a very good production spot. Because our tomatoes on this on this part last year 
did not do very well. The ones up front did real well. We've also got pickle worm issues. Now the cucumber plants. Man, they're going crazy, but there's not a lot of cucumbers on them. Our watermelons. I need to get these slung today. But man, we've got a got a few got a few watermelons going on. Oh, hi little cucumber. Please don't have a pickle worm. Please don't have a pickle worm. I don't see any spots on it. Hi. Like we had tons of blooms, but they were all male blooms there. Um, and after doing some research, as the plants are are growing, they will produce male flowers first. Um, so it may take time for the females to show up, but they're showing up now. Yeah. They're here for the party. You guys have any ideas what to do about pickle worms we tried nemo we've only done it once this season though so it might be part of it is this a squash bug that's a squash bug right there yep sure is kill it i don't know if you guys can see that or not but look at the amount of caterpillars it's in that one little area can you guys identify those do you do you know what they are they have just been eating our tomato plants up they're not tomato hornworms i don't think because they don't look green it's not good for these plants. All right, so we got those all up off the ground. I'm really just, I'm a little frustrated to be honest with you with this garden. Uh, and it happens, it's okay, it's okay to, to express your concerns for your garden. Lots of caterpillars this year, whereas we've never had that many before. We've got pickle worms in our, everything, squash, cucumbers, zucchini. Everything that can get affected by pickle worms has been affected by uh, at least to some degree. Uh, and again, I guess I guess a, a big attribute to that is just the fact that we got started so late. That's the only thing I can think. We need to use more neem oil. Um, yeah, just a uh, little, little disappointing, but that's okay. We're going to keep going. It's okay to be disappointed, but don't stop. We're going to keep going. We're gonna make the best out of it that we possibly can and continue to push forward with our garden. All right, I think that's gonna do it for the trimming. Nope, here's a couple more. Right, I think that got it. We'll move on over to, uh, move on over to our squash and zucchini it's got a lot of uh, powdery mildew issues. We're gonna cut back those leaves and then spray the remainder of the plant down with a solution of baking soda, water, and uh, dish soap. Just like with any plant, with squash and zucchini and stuff, you want good airflow. And that'll reduce a lot of the problem with the powdery mildew, but you'll never completely escape that. But after watching Rachel from that 1870s homestead, she always trims hers back and then wraps it with athletic tape. Well, we don't have athletic tape right now to wrap them with, but we're gonna go ahead and prune them on back and just kind of keep an eye on these things. Honestly, we've we've grown summer gardens before and not had, well, I've grown summer gardens before. Jess, uh, Jesse and I have just started last year gardening, but I've had some pretty good success. Uh, I'm, I'm more interested to see <clears throat> what we can do in the fall because I've never grown a fall garden before and we're really wanting carrots and uh, greens, brassicas. We want all those those cool weather crops which really we can't start until around October because it stays warm uh, up until about October and then it starts to cool off a little bit. So we'll probably, probably sometime in September, we'll start seeding uh, the stuff for the fall garden and, and see how that goes through October, November. Uh, some of the stuff, if it's still producing the tomatoes and the peppers and stuff, we'll leave out here until uh, such time that they're just not producing anymore. And then we'll rip the plants out and 
and uh, go from there. But we're uh, we're really hoping that our, that our fall garden does a lot better than, than our summer garden has been. Ah, yeah. Vine borers. Perfect evidence of vine borers right there. We've, we've got so much stuff going on. Yep, yeah, they're in there too. <clears throat> so much stuff going on out here. The vine borers. I feel like we've got some squash bugs out here. The pickle worms. The caterpillars on the tomatoes. Just a lot of pests this year. And we, we're trying to be organic, so we're trying not to spray it down with a whole bunch of chemicals. But, um, I'm definitely gonna have to use some more neem oil next year. Or, well, when I get done with all this, I'll spray spray these down with the, the stuff for the powdery mildew, which is the baking soda water, like I told you. And then probably spray the tomatoes and stuff down with the neem oil. Well, I've done an absolute hack job out here on the squash and zucchini very obvious signs of vine borers had to pull up a few plants because they were just they were just gone too far gone we still got a few left i'm gonna spray for the powdery mildew i'm gonna use the neem oil on the tomatoes and then i'll put slings on these watermelons and i think i'm done outside for the day it's a it's a rather hot day today Tomatoes are, they're trimmed up. Peppers, peppers are looking good. There's my one trimming that I took off the tomato. We're gonna try to root that. But as of right now, we're gonna call it out here. Pick it up tomorrow. I've got some seedlings I gotta do. Been close to a hundred and it's about 60% humidity. There's the herbs, looking a little better. The stevia didn't want to come up, but it uh, it finally started coming up. I think that's stevia. But I, I talked to Baker Creek and the nice people over there said that since we had a $5 pack of seeds, 15 seeds, and none of them appeared to come up, that they'd send us another another packet, which we have yet to, to plant. 
so we'll see how that goes everything's looking pretty good though we did have some herbs that we planted that didn't do very well but that's okay roses uh, i ripped up the, the stuff that was supposed to be a bed around there and we're gonna we're gonna redo that but i've been trimming these roses back we're gonna take some cuttings of these this uh this fall and try to get some more rose plants out of them some more rose bushes and there's our hydrangea guys do you does anybody know what's wrong with this hydrangea like it's got purple black spots all over it i just deadheaded it it's got some good growth good new growth that i was going to try to root but man it's, it's like traveling up all the leaves and i don't know what that is or how to fix it so if anybody has any ideas please let me know i know i said earlier i was going to be done because it was really hot today and it is really hot but i've sweat so much in this shirt uh, and in this hat that uh, a little breeze cools me off a good bit that's what our bodies are what we're meant to do that's what sweat is for is to keep you cool so i drink me a big glass of water a uh, big glass of green tea and I'm gonna stay out here for a little while longer. I already deadheaded the roses and the uh, the hydrangea like I showed you. But uh, our avocado tree is looking a little peaking and I think it's starting to get root bound in that pot that it's in. So, it's time for an upgrade. better of a home for him. The other pot didn't have any drainage in the bottom of it, oddly enough, and we didn't notice before we put him in there. See, no holes at all in there. So we'll take and we'll put a drain hole in the bottom of this and use it for something else. But uh, I think Beauregard's gonna, gonna do real nice in his new home. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna be doing today is I've got all these pots, I've got them filled up with potting soil, I watered them down a little bit just so that they're not super dry. And I'm going to plant some pumpkin seeds, the stevia that we talked about earlier, uh, and some spaghetti squash that I got from a fresh market. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a farmer's market, but it's inside. Uh, I got these a few years ago, so I'm not, I'm not sure if they're going to germinate or not, but we're going to try. I'm going to put a couple of seeds of each in each one of these. Like, this will be the stevia, these two will be the pumpkins, and then this one will be the spaghetti squash. We're just going to see how well they germinate gonna leave them right here on this table this is right out in front of our house <clears throat> we get good morning sun uh, and then at about I don't know 11 o'clock the sun is past this point so I don't think that these are gonna be too hot I'll come out and water them every day got the water hose right over here so I'm gonna go ahead and plant these real quick so this is a stevia these seeds are super small like super small well, with stevia you just want them just barely under the soil if, if at all under the soil Stevia typically has a low germination rate, so if we can get if we can get these to germinate at all, I'll be happy. So I've got these burpy jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. Now for the fairy morse, uh, these are small sugar pumpkins. They're organic. I've never grown pumpkins before, but I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to have my own pumpkins for jack o' lanterns at Halloween. So maybe these will do well. And then if these um, sugar, the small sugar pumpkins do well, uh, just as mom's probably going to make some fresh pumpkin pies for the holidays. No, can't beat a fresh pumpkin pie. I hope I'm not planting these too deep. I don't feel like I am. I'm barely going up to, barely getting my finger in there up for the first knuckle. Okay, now for the real experiment. This spaghetti squash seeds, these, uh, these came from squash. I saved these seeds uh, from squash that I got from basically a farmer's market that's indoors. All organic food, good, good, healthy uh, food place. But it's been a few years. 
honestly, I don't remember how long ago it was. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say probably, I don't know, six, eight years ago. So we're going to give them a try, see how they, see how they do. I hope that um, if you're finding this channel for the first time, if you've never seen me or never seen Jesse, that you know that we're not new to the concept of homesteading, but we're new to the new to the actual practice of a lot of the stuff. We've been canning our own food for about a year now. Uh, we had a garden last year; it was pretty successful. It wasn't wasn't the best garden I've ever seen, but. Uh, for, for beginners, it's pretty good. And we're hoping that you guys can learn something from us uh, and that we can learn something from you guys. So if you have any suggestions, any tips, any comments, please let us know. I think that we're doing something that's going to not work. By all means, let us know. Be nice about it, of course. But just say, hey, you did this in this video, but you might you might want to try to do it this way. You know, just what whatever you guys think that we might be doing that should be done a little differently to help with the success rate. We're more than open for a suggestion. Just with a fine mist, we get these watered in. Like I said, we'll leave these out here to, uh, to germinate. And tomorrow we might actually, might actually plant some flowers. We got plenty of potting soil left. We've got plenty of pots left. So uh, we, we'll probably Jesse and I will probably plant some flowers tomorrow, and that'll be in another video. Guys, we, we appreciate very much everything uh, that you do for us, all the views and, and the likes and comments and stuff. We appreciate it. Uh, if you're new to the channel, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, come back and hang out with us more often. We're trying to get videos out as frequently as possible, but with our chaotic schedule, it's, it's kind of rough. So. We're doing it the best we can. Also, make sure you check out our blog, chaotichealthy.com. Uh, most of the videos that we do, we'll also have, if they're like instructional videos, we'll have a blog post up about it. So we would love for you to, to join us over there and join us on social media too. Thank you guys very much. And remember, through your chaos, stay healthy. Take care.